I want to share with you some infinite banking improvements that your very own finance geek, Denzel Rodriguez, has made to improve my language on how I deliver the concept effectively to you, right? The messaging and also strategies that I have improved based on what I've said in the past. So first thing and shout out to Kim Butler and Bruce for telling me this is when you are borrowing inside of a life insurance policy, whole life or IUL, the, the proper way to say it is we're borrowing against the policy. We're not borrowing from the policy. Why? Because if I was borrowing from the policy, it's kind of like me taking a loan from my 401k. So if I have $100,000 in my 401k and I take out a loan from the 401k for $30,000, I now have $70,000 inside of the 401k and I have 30,000 outside of the 401k, which I'm going to go do some work with, try to create some arbitrage. I'm going to pay an interest back to myself with a cash value life insurance policy. We're borrowing against the life insurance policy, meaning similar to a home equity line of credit. When you borrow against the equity in your property, the bank is giving you money and they're putting your equity as collateral. Insurance company, I borrow against the life insurance policy, the cash value, the insurance company, let's say I got $100,000 in cash value. I take out a loan for 30K at whatever interest rate, five, maybe 6% or lower. You are going to get the insurance company's money. They're going to give you their money at their interest rate and your cash value is now collateral. So what happens is your cash value is going to continue to grow uninterrupted. It's going to keep growing compound compounded as if you never touched the money in the first place, similar to a home equity line of credit. No matter how much I borrow from my HELOC, right? The amount of money uh, that my property appreciates has no effect to the amount of debt that is on the property. So when I borrow against the HELOC, take money out to do velocity banking, to pay off some other debts, to consolidate some debts, your property will continue to appreciate in value. That has no effect to the value of the property. Okay. So that's one fix IBC improvements. Okay. The second thing I did a video titled this exact thing, infinite banking process in 2020. In that video, you'll hear me say, and I've said in other videos, you'll hear me say how I am running taxes through the life insurance policy, right? And how I was going to do that year to year. I am no longer doing that. Why? It's no longer efficient compared to the investment strategies and the 10 X strategies that I have going on in the policy itself. Where did I get the idea? of running taxes through the policy, through the famous book, Become Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. There's a strategy about equipment financing and taxes. So I think it has some efficiency to a degree. Long term, no. In my opinion, I think we can do a hell of a lot better by borrowing against the policy at whatever interest rate and then investing that money and earning a much higher rate of return bigger gains, bigger profits, use the principal to pay back the policy loan, plus the interest to cover the loan interest, and you're left with a net profit outside of the policy. And you might even be producing cash flow as well from that asset or dividends to some extent. So I've improved on that. The next thing is I'm no longer going to say 90, 10, 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40, because that's creating a little confusion because everybody, and I mean everybody, uses says 1090 2080 30 70 60 40 25 75 15 85 now i don't know about you but it sounded easier to just say 90 10 70 20 60 40. it's like i have to think to say 1090 2080 70 30 60. i gotta get used to saying it but for the longest i've been saying 90 10 80 20 70 30 60 40 75 25 why when you say that to the infinite banking industry leaders and experts, they're thinking, oh shit, Denzel is doing 90-10 split policies. That's 90% base premium, 10% cash value. That's terrible. Don't do that. Terrible. Don't do that. 
Now, I'm not doing it because I explain in the videos, 90% is cash value, 10% base premium, or 20% uh, base premium, 80% cash value. So small tweak in the language. I'm now going to say 1090 because we're saying that first number is base premium. And the second number is cash value, okay? The next thing was interest. How we deal with loan interest when we're borrowing against, not from, against. When we're borrowing against our policies, do you pay back the loan immediately over time? How do you handle the loan interest? Comment below. I personally was guiding my clients with two different options. I was saying, when you borrow money against the policy, we want to earn a higher rate of return out here, and we want to strategically pay back the loan over time, the principal, the loan interest. I would rather you pay the loan interest with your own money, additional cash flow, or the profit, the savings, the recapturing of cash flow from whatever it is we use the money when we borrowed against it. Does that make sense? Those two options. So let's show an example so that you are clear. Let's say 100,000 cash value. You and I, we take out a $40,000 loan, 5%, okay? That 5% is simple interest compounded. So in one year, you're gonna pay $2,000 in interest if you keep the loan outstanding for an entire 12 months. Got it? So what happens is you can either, from your four major numbers, right? Let's use mine. I can take my cash flow in one month, 2,000 bucks, and immediately pay the, pay the loan interest from the policy, right? I can immediately pay the loan interest, and now I've got $40,000 which the goal is to earn higher than 5%. So maybe I earn 10, 12%, 9%, whatever it is. So I'm gonna earn, let's say I earn 10% on 40 grand over 12 months, that's $4,000 that, that you and I will earn together, okay? I can use 2,000 from the four to pay the loan interest, or I use my cash flow, my additional cash flow from my income to pay the loan interest. I personally was telling my clients one of the two, to do one of the two. And worst case scenario, you let the policy performance or you let the policy cash value pay the loan interest. In my opinion, this is me improving. improving. In my opinion, that's the worst way. I didn't necessarily think it was as bad in the beginning, but as I learned and got better, I said, no, that's actually not efficient long-term, maybe in the beginning, maybe in a crisis, but that does have an effect on the performance of your cash value if you're taking from your cash value to pay the premium or pay the loan interest. I personally do not want to do that, right? So I'm going, I'm getting further away from that and I'm sticking to those other two options, either the profit from earning earnings on 40K pays the loan interest, or I use cash flow to pay the loan interest. In my opinion, I prefer to use cash flow. I think is the best way. Use my additional income and revenues, pay the loan interest myself out of pocket, and profit the whole 10% in whatever investment that is. So now I got 44K in the investment, and that's gonna compound at 10% the following year. And I do not, I'm still hardcore on this, I do not pay back the policy loan principal because that has no effect to the cash value. The interest does. And that was the differentiation that I had to learn. So I think I got better on that. Let me know your thoughts to the experts that are watching, the people that have been in this industry for a while. How do you like that? So me personally, I have a policy Right, and let, let me go ahead and share my screen so I can share with you exactly my policy figures and numbers and all that good stuff. So let's come over here. This is Denzel's policy, okay? So as you can see, we are now in year two, approaching year three, current cash value, 33,000. Got a loan out for 13.5. I'm funding 15K a year, base premium 1,500. 
the Lisser, that's like the term 1500 and the Ailer, that's pure cash value 12k that's the that's the uh the splitting of the money where the 15k is going okay death benefit almost at a mil just under 900k i'm gonna be i'm gonna be paying 15k in for the next like 31 years all the way up until age 65 after age 65 becomes a reduced paid up okay the strategy for me in this policy is just to simply fund it all the way up until i can't fund it no more right it's a very very long term funding policy and I'm going to be borrowing from the policy to make investments, to create cash flow. I'm never going to do an income distribution strategy from this policy. I don't see the value in doing that. I think it would hurt my policy long term, along with the death benefit. So I'm not going to do that. Guardian, same thing. Let's go back up to the top. I'm in my third year, funding 70000 a year, base premium 7 k It's literally only designed to fund for about seven years. After that, becomes a reduced paid up. If I don't do that, I can keep funding the policy, but not at 70K. That is the disadvantage of a 1090 split is that you cannot fund it as long as you typically would like. It gets a little iffy according to like the risk, in my opinion, I still got to learn. But that's when the argument for having a higher base premium would, would essentially make a little more sense if you want to go really, really long. Now with mass mutual, they let you go as low as 1090 and fund pretty long. So that's pretty interesting too with the insurance limitations. Um, but still in this, my term insurance expense is going to get extremely expensive in these years, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, which is why if I continue to kept, keep going in the late 60s, 70s, and 80s, I might have an issue if I didn't over inflate my mech to support that so again the policy is set up to design up to 65 funding up to age 65 if i go longer i might run into an issue that term cost is going to become very expensive which is why i just do a reduced paid up or worst case scenario i just pay the base premium after 65 if i still want to keep paying into it i just pay the base premium okay so i just want to you know share that guardian same thing 70 grand I currently have, does it say it here? It doesn't show what I have in loans. Oh no, it's right here. This, yeah, I've got 76,000 in loans at the moment. Money outstanding. Each and every year, um, I pay the loan interest out of pocket and then I create more profit from it. So I just wanna show you those two policies so you get a nice idea of that. Let's come back to the board, All right? So when I, each and every year, I'm taking out 40K. I'm paying somewhere in the neighborhood between five and 6% for um, um, Guardian. And then whatever is the interest rate, I pay it in full upfront in the beginning from my cash flow. So in addition to putting in 70 grand, I'm also paying an additional couple thousand dollars in interest. That 40 grand is now gonna go to work for me, right? I'm doing a mixture of crypto investing, gold, silver max funding and hsa the raw well not a roth anymore because i make too much dang money and i'm looking at the uh i'm looking at the uh the, the freaking backdoor roth strategy so i got that in my in my hindsight but in the meantime i just have a brokerage account so i got the stock hsa gold silver crypto i'm doing some lending like i said earlier i lend i lent some money real estate right all of these things are going to yield much higher returns than five to six percent we're talking 100 percent returns over a long period of time depending on what i invest in like a crypto investment i could get a hundred x uh not hundred x hundred percent well probably in reality when i'm when i bought ethereum around 300 dollars, now it's at three thousand plus that's a uh is that a 300 percent return or higher I forget. Let me see. I forget them. But these are high returns. Yes. So those returns, I don't want to affect the compounding the rule of 72 on those investments. So I'm going to keep creating revenue and income and just pay the loan interest myself. And I'm financing these things. Meanwhile, the same money is growing in the policy, uninterrupted interest, compounded tax free. So it creates a wash effect, no cost of borrowing. 
highly effective in my opinion.